Ahoy hoy, and welcome to a new feature. We're going to call it How Would I Contain It? That's a good idea. Maybe we'll call it something else. How Would I Contain It is a pretty long, no, it's not that long. SCP-07, yeah. How Would I Contain It? SCP-076. Today, we're going to examine uh, SCP-076, also known as Able, or the invulnerable, uh, strong rage monster man, and we will examine his containment procedures, examine his capabilities, and then take a sort of a real life perspective on how containment of this particular object could be done to minimize the loss of life, because we'll talk about it a little bit. I've done a little bit of reading already. But I mean, I already know a little bit about this SCP, obviously. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read the containment procedures for Abel. Containment area 25B is to be located 200 meters below sea level, tunneled out of solid bedrock in a seismologically stable area. Sole access to the containment facility is to be through a vertical elevator shaft separated every 50 meters with a reinforced blast door, constructed of 20 centimeter thick material shielding. Elevator shaft shall be flooded with seawater when not in use. I could say a lot about the uh, grammatical structure of that, but that's not the point of today's video. Containment Area 25B is to be constructed with the following components, an outer security perimeter against outside threats staffed by security personnel trained in close quarters battle and counter intrusion tactics, an administrative and support area consisting of support facilities and living quarters for on-site personnel, a primary containment zone consisting of a 7 meter cube encased in 1.5 meters of reinforced material. The primary containment zone is to be designed to be flooded and drained as needed and should remain filled with seawater unless access to contents is required. A 150 meter killing corridor, which is to be the sole access to the primary containment zone from the administrative and support area, including water, power, drainage, and ventilation lines. The walls and floor of the corridor are to be reinforced in a manner similar to the primary containment zone and the addition of an electrical deterrent system capable of delivering a 20 volt shock, or I'm sorry, a 20,000 volt shock. A security station located at the entrance to the killing corridor is to be staffed with no fewer than three armed security personnel on watch at any point in time. Armament is to include, but not to be limited to, at least one close-in weapons system on a pental mount with a clear sight up, up, sorry, a clear line of sight down the corridor with a plexiglass screen to protect the operator from thrown weapons. In the event of a full breach, all on-site staff are to proceed immediately to the closest security station for weapons and armor distribution. Staff will remain at a Alert Condition 1, no idea what Alert Condition 1 is in this context, you should probably tell us, until SCP-076-2 is confirmed neutralized. Should 90 minutes pass after declaration of full breach without a stand-down order being given by level 4 or higher personnel, final contingency measures will be activated, flooding the entire facility in seawater and sealing off the access shaft for a minimum of 24 hours before retrieval is attempted. This will, by necessity, result in the deaths of all on-site personnel. Now we're going to scroll down because the primary containment is surrounding SCP-076-2, not SCP-076-1, which is the coffin that the thing is. So we're going to talk a little bit about what SCP-076-2 can do. So once SCP-076-2 reanimates, which happens occasionally, according to this... <laughs> Uh, doesn't give you a time period, so it could be anywhere between regular, there could be regularity to it, or it could be sporadic, who knows. Occasionally, the subject will attempt to leave SCP-076-1, that's its coffin. If successful, subject will enter a trance state and seek out the nearest human being, ignoring all other living things in the process. Upon coming into contact with living humans, SCP-076-2 will enter a rage state like New Jersey, in which it attempts to engage and kill all human beings encountered. To date, only the subject's death has been shown to be effective in any of these rampages. 
Terminating SCP-076-2 is often problematic due to its significant physical abilities. Subject has superhuman strength and speed, and although not invulnerable, has shown a remarkable ability to ignore pain and shock, pressing on despite what would be debilitating wounds in normal humans. Prior encounters have shown that SCP-076-2 has the ability to, among other things, rip through a reinforced steel security door over the course of four minutes of sustained assault. I mean, that's impressive that he can rip through the steel security door, but it took him four minutes, so that's okay. Clear over 64 meters of distance in under three seconds. It's really good. <laughs> I don't know how fast that is, but that sounds that sounds quite quick. Take multiple 50 caliber BMG <laughs> rounds to the head and survive for several minutes to continue killing despite severe damage to the cerebellum. I get the inclination that it would cause more than just problems to his cerebellum, but maybe he's maybe he it's not being clear here, but perhaps his head and or eyes and or the parts of his uh, body that are needed to actually perceive his uh, surroundings are also not destroyed by a 50 caliber BMG round to the head. That's one of those things like the there's, it's sort of a myth a lot of the times when the idea that you blow somebody's head off, but a 50 caliber, multiple 50 caliber BMG rounds to the head should probably uh, leave not a lot behind, much less not not it's not going to do I mean, it does it. It will do significant damage to the cerebellum, sure, but also do significant damage to everything else. Anyway, SWAT handgun and assault rifle caliber, <laughs> assault rifle caliber bullets out of the air with a length of steel rebar. That, to me, is more impressive than anything else on this thing, honestly. Survive for over one hour, deprived of oxygen before finally asphyxiating. SCP 076 2's most unusual ability is the ability to materialize bladed weapons out of nowhere. I don't really need to explain the black void in space and all this other stuff. It can he can get bladed weapons out of nowhere. That's what he can do. Uh, he has been killed, however, several times in various manners through sustained fire from multiple heavy caliber machine guns through asphyxiation although, as we mentioned before, it takes at least an hour, crushed beneath a 13.6 metric ton piece of elevator equipment for use on SCP-076-1, which we'll get back to that in a second, cremation through the use of a thermite TH3 grenade placed directly inside SCP-076-2's open chest cavity. Kind of want to know the story behind that one. During the worst breach to date, containment area 25 was forced to detonate its on-site warhead as a last... Why... Uh, that was dumb. As a last attempt to contain SCP-076-2 while it was attempting escape, resulting in total destruction of the site and all on-site personnel, SCP-076-1s has survived. That's the coffin that he regenerates from. So, okay. We know that he's essentially, he's just super strong. I mean, this is, no offense, Ugh. he's like... Wolverine mixed with a little bit of Spider-Man for the super strength. I mean, he's not, he's not like invulnerable. He just comes back once, you know, from, he comes back once killed and he's super strong. So yeah, we'll give him Spider-Man strength, Wolverine's regeneration and or toughness. <sighs> just crush him. That seems like the easiest option here. So you know where he's going to come from. He's got his coffin at the center of your containment area. So, and he can, you know, he can cover quite a lot of space in a very short period of time. Just put it in, say, I don't know, it doesn't have to be a cylinder, but I like the idea of a cylinder more than anything else. Put him in the center of a cylinder with a, a donut, sort of like metal press at the top. And anytime he regenerates and starts heading out to try and break through the steel walls and or doors you just whoom smash it that's it that was easy <laughs> we got all... does that say, that seems like yeah because he's he, he automatically tries to seek out the nearest human being there's going to be steel walls and or doors that he's going to take some time to get through so just give him an obvious path 
he takes the obvious path and then or even the cord like they have it set up so there's a corridor where they shoot him a bunch of times just have the ceiling of that corridor smash him just here's him here's the <laughs> top of the corridor he walks through he comes through the door and then whoom he's dead done that's it wow they overthought this i feel like i mean if they didn't know from the beginning with but he was crushed effect effectively and even if for example in this particular case if for example crushing him doesn't immediately kill him it at least immobilizes him until he dies yeah that's it crap i thought this was gonna be longer <laughs> hold on I, I really did. I thought this was going to be longer, but that's that's a very simple solution to your problem. You don't need to put people at the end of a corridor with a gun. It's fun. It's neat and everything, but it's unnecessary, especially since he, he you know, I mean, guns work, but they only <laughs> they don't work. Uh, there's no assuredness. Like, oh, my God. Oh, man. The addiction to bullets in this. We got to do it with bullets. Lots of bullets. Let's give ourselves more opportunities to do it with bullets. And then it's like, oh, oh, but the creator's like, oh, but bullets don't really work that well. So why is the SCP Foundation focusing on bullets? I'm, I'm Anyway, crush him. It works. <laughs> I feel like that could be that could be a T-shirt of its own. <laughs> crush him. It works. It, it just works. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah that's it thank you very much for watching i'm gonna do more videos like this where i examine uh scps uh, older scps of uh, particular danger and uh, uh talk about how the containment procedures are either um overdoing it or underdoing it or just straight up wrong you're wrong about scp 076's containment procedures but i'm not gonna call it that i don't think that's funny that's funny right there the, the option is right there. It's actually included, crushed beneath a 13.6 metric ton piece of elevator equipment. And nobody's like, hey, why don't we just crush him? If you don't kill him immediately, he'll die eventually and be restrained until that time. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification. And if you disagree with me, by the way, which I bet some of you do, Go down into the comments and let me know how wrong I was. And then uh, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell next to that. So you're notified when I upload new videos. I'm talking directly to you, Carl, because I know what you did. Then head on over to patreon.com forward slash D Sumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted and Sinjariki, who have both pledged at $100 and Morgan who's pledged at $40. It is nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Tuesday. It took me a second to remember the day. <laughs>